There are times in our lives that we will never forget. Moments that changed our world, shaped who we are, and after they happened, things were never the same again. They are the events that rocked the region. In the final installment of our series tonight, we take a look at the closing of Sprague Electric, one of the largest employers in the city of North Adams. While its closure devastated the Northern Berkshire economy, out of its ashes came Mass Mocha, one of the largest contemporary art museums in the country, and a new, different economy. I took a trip to North Adams to bring you the story. When Sprague Electric Company arrived in North Adams, it was something of a savior, says historian Paul Marino. It came in in 1929, months ahead of the stock market crash. As the textile mills were moving out, it took over literally just about every mill in, in, in the city. Sprague Electric Company expanded here in 1942, converting a former textile mill into an electronics plant. At its height, Sprague would employ about 4,100 people. But as competition abroad increased, Sprague couldn't cut it, and it closed its Marshall Street plant here in 1985. Charlie Kelly spent his entire career as a Sprague Electric Company machinist. We supported the production people making uh, jigs and, you know, anything to help them with their day-to-day with their -day, day -day work. Much of that work was building capacitors. The capacitors stores electricity is what it does. Sprague was a, a woman's plant because of the, all the production was small hand work and uh, they had, you know, machine shop and electricians and plumbers and everything like that, but very few men. And they dropped a thousand people on Main Street every noontime. Over his 44 years with the company, Kelly witnessed ups and downs, including strikes and downsizing. And he was there in the 1980s when Sprague's sprawling Marshall Street plant, once home to Arnold Print Works, closed its doors. The then newly elected mayor, John Barrett III, was among those grappling with the impact. The local newspaper, the, the transcript, I think, explained it best. He said they wouldn't blame me after six months in office if I just shut off the lights, closed the curtains, and left the keys behind and left City Hall. Sprague had been a dominant force in this community for 50 years. They dominated this landscape. They dominated the economy. Sprague's downsizing saw population dip and unemployment skyrocket. More than 30 years later, population, about 13,000 people, has not recovered. And unemployment in North Adams is still nearly double the statewide average of 3.5%. The trouble at Sprague was compounded in the community as other manufacturing companies in the region either had cutbacks or closed. So you add that all up and we were looking at a loss of 2,500 to 3,000 jobs over an 18 month period. It was cataclysmic. It was an economic neutron bomb landing right downtown. But the fallout from that blow Joseph Thompson and others witnessed was the beginning of a new era, one where the hum of machines was replaced by the relative hush of a museum. My first uh, response was, oh my God, this place is huge. This is crazed. But it was precisely the type of crazy that could fit the then bold and unheard of vision of opening the largest contemporary art museum in the country in one of the smallest cities in the state. It would take nearly 15 years for the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art to go from idea to opening. And last year, Mass Mocha renovated even more of the former Sprague site. We, we were sort of settling in to settling into this big hulking red elephant of a campus that we occupy and our our prime asset was always space and time we're, we're still knocking on wood and we don't know what the long-term wave and cycles be but we nearly doubled our attendance over the past uh, 18 months or so so we're encouraged uh, feeling like this this museum has found its footing and North Adams too is feeling uh, like a much more healthy, robust community than when we first arrived. But some in the community have been critical of Mass Mocha's leaders, saying the museum is too insular and the local economy hasn't benefited from museum patrons the way it once did from Sprague employees. Our first job is to do great work, to put really wonderful art in our galleries and on our stages and to attract you know, a, a wide, diverse group of people here. That's job one. That's maybe job two and three and four. He added that becoming more connected to the community is part of the work ahead for Mass Mocha 
And while Mass Mocha hasn't been a fast-acting economic catalyst, Barrett said it has had a positive impact. Without Mass Mocha, I don't know where this city would be today. It has been the catalyst that I always wanted it to be. I do think that they're trying, starting to find their, their, their place now to be able to do that. But I think it's, it's going to take a lot of hard work.